Hello, Kyle here. I am going to review the new DC movie, DC League of Super Pets. This review will be a mix of kind of just a regular review of a movie and also a bit of like an editorial because I really want to get down to something that I felt for the last number of years and also something that specifically replies, uh, applies to this film. And um, that will be my feelings towards Warner Brothers and DC's treatment of Superman. But first, I will go into the film itself. I was very excited to hear that they were making this movie a number of years ago because I'm a huge fan of Crypto the Superdog and Ace the Bat Hound. One of my earliest child memories is actually going to the toy store and seeing the toys for the new Crypto the Superdog TV series that came out in 2005. And they were some really cool looking toys, very colorful. I never got them. They may have been too expensive at the time. And I was always sad because like I really wanted those toys. And I've known like Crypto ever since. I mean, I have like a small little, um, it's hard to say, like a little bit of like a, collectible figure of crypto and it's so I, I always love the idea of the superman family and i i've like known ace the bat hound for as long as i can remember because ace was in batman beyond one of my favorite tv shows and he was badass in that show um so I was so excited to hear they were making this movie because I love these characters. And then my excitement for the film just sank when I saw what was like the first trailers, the first look at it, because they announced that Kevin Hart would be Ace the Bat Hound, which I didn't think was a good fit at all. However, I did say that without knowing the movie they were going to make. But then when I saw the movie they were going to make, I was completely against what they were putting together. The Rock as Crypto was a interesting casting. I think it worked when they announced it. But going into this film, I really was afraid of Kevin Hart as Ace the Bat Hound because Ace, from what I've known, has always been a very, very serious and, you know, like basically Batman type character. The fact that they were getting Kevin Hart, a comedian, to play Ace the Bat Hound scared me because that meant that that character was nothing like the character I grew up with. Um, and the, the, the look of the character in the trailers looked nothing like the character that we're used to. Um, I will say when I was pleasantly surprised that Kevin Hart in this movie because I actually thought he was one of the best parts of the film. I thought he brought some charm to the character. He actually didn't sound as much like Kevin Hart as I feared him to sound. He really did kind of sound more rugged. And you know, I have to give Kevin Hart, um, you know, some props because as an actor, I think that Kevin Hart has been showing lately. I haven't watched a lot of his movies, but I've seen just by trailer wise he has been veering a little bit more into dramatic roles which i really do love that as an actor he's doing that um and it's funny because going into this film i thought kevin hart would be as the ace the least thing i like turns out the one of the things i like least about this movie was the rock as crypto i think he was miscast um he does like, if you see the character design and you see the way that that crypto dog acts, to me, that's not The Rock. There's one scene where he, like, moves his eyebrows a bit like The Rock, you know? And, like, that's probably intended because The Rock was going to play him. But, like, I was watching some, like, this could have been a Sam Rockwell. This could have been some other actor that was could have had a younger voice to him. The Rock sounded a bit too old to play this role. Um, or at least maybe, I don't know, his voice, 
I don't know, something about it did not fit that character. Um, but for me, what makes this movie one of my least favorite films of the year so far is just I thought the plot of the movie was just so lazy. It was filled with so many tropes you've seen of, you know, the dog being jealous of the owner's new love. You had a pet that felt like they wanted to take over the world because other people saw them differently. They had these pets getting these superpowers, which was so stupid because the thing is, is like this, this film could have been about, you know, other comic book pets. I believe Wonder Woman has a cat in the comics. But instead, they made it about, like, the, this giant pig. They made it about a turtle. And these things, they just did not work for me. I did not... I, I'm surprised. I didn't laugh... Well, hold on. I laughed once in this movie. One time in this hour and, I don't know, 45-minute movie. I laughed one time, and it was a catch joke. And it technically wasn't even a joke that the writers probably came up with. It was probably something that um, they could have had you know, a VFX team work on, because it was a billboard. That was the one time I laughed. I thought none of this film was funny. I thought a lot of the jokes were quite bad. And I think that one of the main issues is that they, they kind of, I feel like the, the writers, the director, they had no idea what today's kids and, you know, what people like because for some reason there's Taylor Swift all over this movie they play like two Taylor Swift songs one's in the movie one's in the credits and one of them Bad Blood was from 2015 2015 before you know Batman vs Superman even came out and they just it just feels so tone deaf and the film, I was just so disappointed in it. Um, and then, like, we can get to the issue with how they, I found, disrespected all of these comic book characters. Because I think that one of the best animated films in the no last number of years was Teen Titans Go to the Movies. And if you haven't seen Teen Titans Go to the Movies... You should check it out. It's on HBO Max. It's a great little film. And of course, it's about the Teen Titans, you know, from DC. Robin leads the Teen Titans. And it's a film, as you could say, for kids. But the film has many jokes that I think will play with adults. I mean, many jokes that will play with adults. It is really clever. They have moments in that film that I think ahead of its time. I mean, the, some of the jokes in there still really work today. They have this hilarious thing in that movie about how it is technically a musical. And the thing about Teen Titans Go to the Movies is I felt like it never disrespected the comic book characters. You can make a parody of something, but there's a fine line between, you know, be making fun of something and then just disrespecting it. And in the case of Super Pets... There are a number of moments in this film where they treat these superheroes like Batman, like Superman, like like all these iconic superheroes, and they make them not only look dumb, but they make them look weak. And I understand it's a film about crypto. It's not about Superman. It's not about Batman. It's about the pets. But when you have a pet, like a pig, that's, you know has no fighting experience whatsoever. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. It's stupid. And, like, those characters can fight, you know, a, a guinea pig that can destroy Superman. Like, it, it just makes these characters look weak. It does not make them look like the characters that they should be. And this is my main issue. So, Superman is the greatest superhero of all time. I mean, for me, Batman's my favorite. Batman's my favorite. I also really love Spider-Man. And Superman, see, the thing about Superman, though, is that Superman's been around the longest. I mean, he predates Batman by, like, one year. But 
Superman has gone through generation after generation after generation. He is a like iconic superhero. He is the superhero. Like if you look there the the term superhero kind of comes from Superman. Yet Warner Brothers in DC have not had an idea of what to do with this character since 2017 when Justice League came out because ever since Justice League came out in 2017 we haven't seen Superman in a movie outside of you know this film we have not seen you know a we haven't even heard of a plan for them to have a Superman movie coming out anytime soon everything's just like speculative and what what the biggest issue regarding this is is that we are relegated to moments like in the Shazam film which is I love I love Shazam but at the end of the movie they reveal a Superman but his face his head is cut off so you don't see who it is it clearly is Henry Cavill Superman but for some reason either they couldn't get Henry Cavill to come on board either they couldn't you know pay him to come on board it just feels like they are not respecting this character. And in this movie, you have a guinea pig, one of the stupidest characters <laughs> I've ever seen, stop Superman. And most of the time in this movie, Superman is not saving the world by himself. He either needs Crypto to help him or he needs the Justice League to help him. And I understand you want to have these characters you want to show them you want to have them you know play around with others but if you look at whether it's you know the 2017 theatrical version of justice league whether it is the you know um i guess you could say 2021 but you know the original the theatrical but the snyder cut of justice league in both of those films, Superman is the one to save the day. He is the one. The Justice League members can fight Steppenwolf. They can, you know, beat the Parademons. But Superman's the one to come in and to save them. And to stop Steppenwolf. Superman stops Steppenwolf. But here it's like... and This goes to the Superman and Lois TV series that's been on. Which I like, but they... I mean, I, I can't even count on my ha hands. Like, there's so many times where Superman in that show cannot save people by himself. He always needs help. He's uh, beat down. He's, um, you know, stopped. And even Supergirl had this. My favorite YouTuber, John Campia, brought up the great point of how they have turned Superman into what they call, like, the WWE as a jobber, where you get him to come in to make the other guy look better so if you know the if superman can stop this villain then you know oh supergirl can stop them or crypto can look how great crypto is but crypto supergirl superboy these are characters that should not be better than superman you don't see you know um you know Robin being better than Batman like these are sidekicks and they can do their own thing but when you have a character as foundational as Superman I just don't understand why Warner Brothers in DC continues to just make a joke of him and I know a lot of people do not like Man of Steel I don't know why because a lot of the times I hear their reasoning it's like well you want the Christopher Reeve Superman. You don't want a, a, you know, a new take on Superman. But, I mean, you can all have your points about Man of Steel. The thing about Man of Steel to me is they did not make Superman look like a joke. Superman saved Metropolis. Superman stopped General Zod. Superman, multiple times in that movie, not only saved people, but did not need help saving people. That is the Superman that we should look up to. That's the Superman that we need. And that this world needs right now. We don't need a Superman that's head is cut off in a, you know, five second cameo appearance. 
We don't need to see Superman get beat up by a guinea pig. These are things that Superman should not be, you know, relegated to. Teen Titans go to the movies, treat Superman with respect, because even when the villain in that film, Slade slash Deathstroke, um, mind controls the superheroes, Superman isn't technically beat. They just put Superman, Raven, put Superman in like another dimension. So they still, you know, really can't stop Superman. But if you can stop Superman in Super Pets by, you know, flashing a little kryptonite at him, oh, Superman, and then you have him stuck in a kryptonite cage? That's disrespectful. I mean, the the movie itself, they they stick all the Justice League members, Aquaman, Flash, Wonder Woman, Cyborg, in these cages to make them look like pets. And I understand it's like, oh, it's the super pets and everything, but why? Why are they doing this? And uh, I, it just infuriated me because even the Lego Batman movie, which when I first saw it, I was iffy on. I don't really like that film now, but the thing about the Lego Batman movie is that that is really a parody and you can see why it's a parody. It's not a Batman movie. It's a le it's like a parody of a, you know, Batman story. Um, but it's, it's weird to me because they even have the Harley Quinn show out now, which I've been struggling with season two. And I mean, I think sometimes the parody works. Like I think Pe Peacemaker is a great example of when, you know, when you're making fun of something, it works. Um, as I said, Teen Titans go to the movies. I thought that that works. But some of these other things, they just, Super Pets, it doesn't even I feel like it makes Crypto look really good either because most of the movie, he doesn't have his powers. And I mean, it's just so frustrating as a DC fan, as a fan of these characters. Justice League, um, the not Justice League Unlimited, but the original Justice League animated series is one of my favorite TV shows I watched as a kid. And that is one of the main reasons that got me into superheroes and comic books. And it just feels like DC still has no idea what to do with these characters. And I've seen a lot of reviews come out say, oh, wow, this movie finally gives us the Superman we need, finally gives us a light and, you know, um, energetic Superman. I'm glad that it works for you, but for me, this is disrespectful. This is disrespectful to the character. Um, they also, I do want to point out, so there's something that's been going on lately that I also don't like about how they are starting to use John Williams' score for Superman the movie in all of these DC properties involving Superman. Uh, why? Like, let's be honest. Little kids, right now, they probably don't know that, that they, they probably don't know that theme. And the reason why they probably don't know that theme is because the theme was in the 1970s. And if you think about it, see, Star Wars, all kids know the Star Wars theme. Because Star Wars has continued with multiple movies, and it's been one story and one universe, and we can hear the Star Wars theme in all these movies we heard in the sequel trilogy. I mean, that is the Star Wars theme, John Williams' Star Wars theme. But Superman is a character. He should have a different theme all the time. James Bond is the one exception because they decided that James Bond would have that theme in every James Bond movie. They didn't decide that with Superman. Superman was a character that when they made the first Superman movie, they would continue that theme through all of Christopher Reeve's films. And then when they made Superman Returns, they brought it back because that film was supposed to be a sequel to the Christopher Reeve Superman movies. 
that's why that song is still in the 21st century because of Superman Returns. The thing is, when Hans Zimmer came in to do the Superman score for Man of Steel, he did a new theme and it was brilliant. I'm not saying the Hans Zimmer's theme is better than John Williams' theme. I think they were both equally great. But look what happens when you say, okay, Hans Zimmer, come in and do a new Superman theme. We get a great Superman theme. By making Superman now so tied into this John Williams Superman theme, it's not fitting the character. It, he feels like Christopher Reeve Superman. I love Christopher Reeve Superman, but this is not a time for Christopher Reeve Superman. And the fact that we are now kind of stuck in the past with this nostalgia. Remakes are being made left and right of these classic Disney films. We're, we're having situations where people are so hell-bent on nostalgia and so self-reliant on nostalgia that they need to grab something to get people interested. This also goes to the Danny Elfman Batman theme, which is starting to come back in this movie. And this happened in the theatrical version of Justice League too. And I'm sorry, but I I would not mind if I don't hear John Williams Superman theme again in theaters, because it's like that's not that's not an exclusive theme. Just like you know, um, Danny Elfman's theme for Spider Man is not an exclusive theme for that character. It's only for Toby's Spider Man, Sam Raimi's Spider Man. But when we start, you know, saying this theme is supposed to be for this character, it starts to make us no longer accept anything new. And that is one of the issues with what's going on now. A lot of people that don't like Man of Steel have this issue that it's not the Superman they grew up with or it's not the Christopher Reeve Superman. I said earlier how... I was a bit against Kevin Hart playing Ace the Bat Hound. And I thought that that was not the character I grew up with. Even though, like, if he did do a pretty good job, similar to, kind of, a little bit similar to the character I grew up with. But we have to accept change. And if Kevin Hart's going to be Ace the Bat Hound, then that's great because that is a new thing. And... For some reason, I think with Warner Brothers in DC, they don't want to accept something new. This two, the two self-reliant and stuck on the past. And we're not going to get another Christopher Reeve Superman again. Because Christopher Reeve was Superman. And Brandon Routh did a great job. And Henry Cavill's a great Superman. But I think they have to start to figure out how to properly respect these characters. Because if you look at what Marvel's doing, and I understand people, you know, compare them all the time, and that is reasonable. They're two competing comic book companies. But Marvel, they, they know what they're doing with their characters. And DC does not, at least in regards to Superman, because... DC does know what they're doing with the Batman, thanks to Matt Reeves' The Batman, which is my favorite movie of the year. But Marvel does not have this issue that DC has. And it also has to do with the fact that there isn't a Kevin Feige at DC, Warner Brothers division. There, there isn't someone right now that is making these decisions. And it's just studio executives that are like, oh, wow, Superman movie. Let's make a movie about Superman's dog. Oh, wow, wait. Let's make a movie about um, the Wonder Twins. Oh, wait, no. Let's make a movie about... Um, um, Aquaman, I mean. <laughs> I kinda, you, know, you know what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, like, I, I'm, just, I'm just frustrated. But um, I think this video has gone on long enough. 
I apologize if you had to listen to my ranting, but I wonder what you think. If you listen to this video, do you also share my same sentiment towards how Warner Brothers is handling the Superman character? Do you think that Super Pets is a really good animated film? Um, let me know in the comments below and thank you. Have a great day. Bye guys.